The Data Cloud Diaries, accessing DMOs through Apex from the default data space. Welcome to another episode of the Data Cloud Diaries. We're, as we're diving deep into Data Cloud, you're building a lot of the data streams, going to the data lakes, flowing into the DMOs, data model objects. And then we're doing things like calculated insights and actions. But there may be things you are in Salesforce Salesforce core, and you want to be able to tap into a data model object. You want to be able to query it, check a value. So this is not trying to take care of actions, but just querying values on the data model objects from Apex. So I have found the code and I've been running the code to do that. And we're going to dive in and look into how to be an Apex. And this means you could have it on a trigger or a flow, or you could even have it um, inside of a screen, how to reach in and grab that DMO logic. There is a caveat, it primarily works on the default data space, and we'll go over that in the video. So reaching into DMOs from inside of Apex. So here's my data cloud, and I'm gonna take a look at our DMOs, data model objects, and we're gonna look at the standard individual, the SSOT individual, which is the standard Salesforce data model object for representing individuals. And here I have a map data stream with the SSOIT individual. And you can see it's API name, and I have one stream mapped into there. Now, we're gonna be wanting to be in Salesforce core inside of Apex, and we're gonna to wanna to query the data that resides here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the data that resides there. So we're gonna take the default data space, we're gonna take the data model, and we're gonna take the individual SSO IOT, and you can see that we've got 13 columns and we have lots of data here of data that's inside the SSOT individual. And we wanna be inside of Apex. Now, in a previous video, we talked about being able to take this query and we talked about being able to run this to the debugger. So in a previous video, we went to the developer console and then from here, we can go into the query editor for the SSOT individual and we can execute. And this is showing us, that showed us the data from the SSOT individual. Let's do it again, it flickered. So here, execute. And that shows us the SSOT individual data. Now, we don't want that through the debugger, we wanna to get to that through Apex. So what I'm gonna, what I've done after researching is created an Apex class called getDMO. And we're gonna walk through the lines of code it takes to query that. So the first is you're gonna get a handle to a query, and that's a CDP query input. So you're gonna instantiate a new query right here, and that creates that new query input object. So it's a, it's a structure meant for taking the query. And here, now I'm actually populating the .sql attribute. You'll notice that it's running SQL, not SQL. Here I'm doing select star, which I can now do because that's SQL. And from SSOT individual, which is the name of the primary data model object for the individual. And then I'm even putting a limit just to be sure. Now to execute the query, what we're gonna do is we're gonna call the query ANSI V2. And this is the query logic on what's called the Connect API. So we're over here into the Connect Apex reference for the Connect API namespace. And we're on the CDP query methods. And what we're gonna be doing is if we look for that particular class that I'm showing you. So this is the primary method that Salesforce recommends for retrieving data. 
So what you're gonna do is it can re request up to eight megs of data across the data model, data lake, and you divide and linked objects. You pass in the connect API dot query input. It's a static class. And then it's going to be receiving the SQL query. Now it'll return an output object. Now if it exceeds a certain amount of data, then you will get a next batch ID as the input. I'm gonna, for this demo, I'm just gonna be demoing single batches, not multiple, but you can easily catch the next batch and iterate and determine whether there is an additional batch. And you see that Salesforce will hold the batch queues up for an hour. So coming back to my class, so you're gonna have your query input, which is to me a light structure. And here is the main functionality, CDP query output V2. And then it's gonna return a map of query metadata items. And so you'll see that from the response calling the executing the query, I'm gonna go response.metadata. So that's line 18. From here, I can quickly check the number of rows that have been returned. And then what I can do is I'm gonna iterate over the rows with a loop, and then I'm gonna build a line of display. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loop through all of the data row elements. And I'm gonna read all the row data, add it to the line display, and then I'm gonna send that to the debug statement. So this is just a small amount of code. One for the connect, two for the sockle, three for the response, four for the um, actually mapping the response, and about five, six, seven, eight for doing the debugs. So for minimal lines of code, I have logic that'll take a SQL statement and it'll map it out. So I'm gonna do quick save. And so to call this, it's this class I created, get DMO, and it's show individuals, which is querying the individual object. So I can go back to here and I can go debug, execute anonymous. And what we're gonna do is this is gonna be show individuals. So what I have is I'm calling the class and the static method and what I'm gonna do is open the debug log and hit execute. And so now I have my debug, I'm gonna go debug only. And now what you see is I'm gonna have 100 rows and you start to see the contacts and the fields that are being pulled. So what I have done is I have just queried in Apex the contact object, the contact in, or excuse me, the individual data lake object, and I'm able to parse over any of the rows. I did a select star, I got SSO, I SSOT individual, and I put a limit of 100. Let's do a limit of 200. And say, quick save. Let's execute, debug, execute anonymous. And so it looks like we're parsed out at 100 for the max. So we're able to clear, let's. So from this code, I can change my limit down to 50. Do a quick save. I can go debug, execute anonymous, execute. And I can see that I can get the 50 rows. So I have the ability query the SSOT individual in the default namespace. Now it is more challenging when you're using the namespaces. So if we take a look here and we're gonna go look in data cloud on data spaces and I've created a Steve tech arc and I have data models in there and I follow the same syntax and I'm querying the airport object which is in a data space we're gonna go debug, execute anonymous. We are getting the message not in scope of the data space. So this is gonna take additional steps 
to get to this data from Apex. We'll discuss that in a subsequent meeting, subsequent session. But in this case, if you're dealing with the default data space, you can use using this Apex right here, you can get to your data. I hope this was helpful. So we're showing you how with less than 10 lines of Apex code, you can be inside of Apex, like in a LWC controller, you can reach into your DMOs, data model objects, you can even go into your data lake objects. You can reach in and you can run SQL queries, not just SQL, but SQL queries, retrieve the data, parse it, and act on it. So that way, if that is reference data at the large volumes, or it's actionable insights, or all kinds of data, it is now available to you inside of Apex. We're gonna um, dig deeper and get the answer on the data spaces, but if you're in the default data space, this is gonna work fine for you. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for joining Apex Access on the Data Cloud Diaries. Join us again, same bad time, same bad channel on stevetecharc.com and Steve Tech Arc YouTube channel. Thank you very much.